as the industry shifted towards disc brakes in the last couple of years, it was really interesting to see the, the positives and the negatives coming out from the stories of people using them. So we'll go through the positives. Or well, why would you choose a bike with, with disc brakes? From my perspective, obviously the, the stopping power is fantastic, right? So you grab that lever, there's a huge amount of, of, of clamping force. No one can debate that the stopping power is generally better, right? Now, what you can debate is what's the limiting factor for, for, for stopping rapidly. And I would probably suggest that the contact patch area of the tire is the limiting factor. So if you wanted to, with these rim brakes, you could probably grab them hard enough to lock the tires up and go over the handlebars. So it means that you're limited by the traction of the tire rather than the clamping force of the brake. What people like about about um, disc brakes essentially is that you don't use a lot of lever pressure to achieve that lockup. So they feel very, very strong, right? Very, very light input creates a huge amount of braking output, which makes them feel very, very strong, right? So if you've got poor grip strength, let's say you're fairly lightly built, you've got little stick insect wrists like mine, and you don't have a lot of grip strength, uh, <laughs> if you've got a poor grip strength, if, you, if you're sort of a, you know, 40 plus, 50 plus lady who's lightly built, for example, don't have a lot of grip strength, disc brakes are fantastic because you don't have to grab them as hard, right? So there's a positive. If you ride in the rain, they're brilliant, right? There's no argument there. They're just way better in the wet. So if you ride in the rain, disc brakes for sure. Yeah. If you're 100 kilos, disc brakes, right? So if you're 100 kilos, you want that stopping power, you are gonna have a lot more weight on the tire, which means a lot more traction to when you brake, which means you're gonna be, your tire is gonna be less limited by the traction because of the extra force on the tire, pushing the tire into the road, right? So you can, you can basically put more braking force through that tire before you reach the limit of traction when you're heavier. So if you're a heavy dude or a heavy lady, yeah, disc brakes for sure. Uh, and now we go to the negatives. <laughs> The negatives. What have you been waiting for? <laughs> well, what I've been waiting for. This is, you know, why did I buy a rim brake bike? The negatives. They're heavy, right? The, the wheels have to be heavier. Now, you can buy lightweight disc wheels, but the group set itself is always heavier, pretty much. I don't think I've seen a disc brake group set that's as light as a rim brake group set of the equivalent, uh, sort, of, sort of level. But the wheels have to be built heavier as well. Because the braking force is transferred radially out through the spokes, from the center of the wheel, the, the wheel has to be heavier and stronger, particularly in the spokes. So you end up with a heavier bike. So if you're a really lightweight dude, nah, that could be a bit of a problem. And I'm a lightweight dude. So there's tick number one for, for rim brakes for me. And that again leads into the, the, the opposites of what we spoke about before. If you're light and you don't need a huge amount of braking force going through those calipers relative to your hand grip strength, not as much of a benefit. The discs aren't as much of a benefit. So these provide ample stopping power for me because I'm light, right? So if you're really light, you might want to consider rim brakes. And if you're light, you might want to consider rim brakes because the bike will probably be lighter and that will affect a light rider more when they're going uphill. So if you're 100 kilo, an extra kilogram on the bike going up a hill, it's nothing, right? But if you're 62 kilos, an extra kilo on the bike going up a hill is more of a concern for a really lightweight rider. If, I, if you don't ride in the rain, and I never ride in the rain, I'm too old for that stuff now, mate. I'm, I'm past that. So if, if it's raining, I get to sleep in and have pancakes. So, you know, <laughs> it, if it's raining, I generally don't go out, yeah. right? So I'm old, I'm decrepit, I don't ride in the rain. So there's the, that's negated, that's out of, the, that's out of the, the equation. And I've got reasonable grip strength. So these are no problem. Sure. They're also cheap. So you can, because rim brakes are going out of fashion, essentially, this stuff is cheap. Bontrager speed stop brakes, a hundred bucks, 150 bucks on the second hand market. One of the best quality rim brake dual pivot, you know, brake systems ever made as far as I'm concerned. Very light, great clamping force and they're cheap as chips. Very hard to get new sometimes, but these ones are second hand, a hundred bucks. These were, these were $120 hold $150 or something like that. So cheap. The group sets are cheaper because they're not brand new, which makes the whole bike cheaper. The wheels are cheaper because they're, they're, they have, they're, they're less modern. So generally you, you can find old rim brake wheels on run out special, which have super high end wheels and they're a lot cheaper. They're also very easy to work on, right? So I stripped and rebuilt, I stripped all of this running gear off my BH and put all of this stuff on this bike in about two and a half hours. And I'm not a professional mechanic. Routing the cables is, is a simple job. Bleeding brakes and getting the pad standoff correct and the alignment of the caliper correct. Yeah, you know, it's, 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 a, bit, it's a bit trickier. 
and then we, we come to the, the major downside that I don't like about them is the pad standoff, right? So if the pad, essentially with a, a disc brake bike, the calipers grip the pad like this, and then they're supposed to jump back off and stand off off, off the disc, right? In, in normal operating conditions, they'll stand back off the disc a little bit. As far as I'm aware, that standoff is controlled or is, is given in the system by a conical rubber seal on most of the systems, which is, which is behind the piston in the, in, the, in the lever. That conical rubber seal, as the piston gets moved, it goes like this and then pushes back and pulls, pulls the pads back off the disc, right, which gives pad standoff. So the pads aren't constantly rubbing, right, in the ideal world. So this conical rubber seal, I believe, tends to harden over time because it's immersed in very caustic brake fluid. So it hardens and eventually the thing doesn't stand off the pad very well. Now that's, that's what I've been told by a few reputable mechanics, that's how I understand it. But the, the, the end result is basically that your pads often touch the disc. They ch -ch 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 -ch. Who's got a set of disc, you know, disc brake calipers that go ch -ch -ch -ch. Because everyone. Yeah, everyone, right? Because the disc is very slightly warped and it touches on the high point, right? So they make noise. They often squeal. You know, you get a little bit of contamination in the pad. Yeah, they do the Chewbacca. So they squeal if they get a bit of oil. You might be riding along and you ride through a puddle and a bit, and the puddle has got a bit of engine oil in it. The stuff comes up into the pads, contaminates the pads, and then you've got to get new pads, right? So they're very finicky with, with alignment and, and misalignment, pad standoff, contamination. There's a lot more farting around with them, I find. Yeah, now some people have, have a bike with disc brakes and it runs sweet as anything and they never have a problem and that, that's great but a huge number of people get very frustrated in the first six or 12 months of ownership of their brand new fifteen thousand dollar road bike with disc brakes because it's always going out of tune and they got to get it back to the mechanic to straighten it up and you know they they can be a bit of a pain these are simple cheap light effective and you know that for me going to discs is not something that i'm absolutely enthused about uh when when i get you know because they are the way of the future this is the way the industry is moving it's going to get progressively harder to get rim brake bikes so i'm super happy to keep this thing as long as i can <laughs> and uh <laughs> i'll stay in the dark ages yes. i'm quite happy with my rim brake bike um, but I'm sure one day I'll get forced into a disc brake bike. Yeah. And maybe by then they will have solved all the problems that I just uh, outlined there in the video. And if you're a 100 kilo person with weak wrists and you're regularly riding the rain and you descend huge mountains with lots of hairpin turns, get a disc brake bike. But if you're the opposite of all that stuff, or you're just a kind of normal person riding around on the weekends and you're not riding in the rain, you know, I'd still consider rim brakes for sure. <laughs> There's so much rage in me, Cameron, so much anger about this topic. No, it's not that bad. <laughs>